Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to Introduction to Business. We'll be starting uh, a new journey uh, in understanding business uh, foundations. This is uh, the first chapter. We're going to be talking about business environment, uh, things that are affecting uh, business. Remember, chapter one of any book is an overview of the book condensed, so we'll be just, just exposing you some new terminologies or concepts. You're taking me online or face-to-face -face class? We already discussed this uh, in, in our forums or our discussions. You already read the book, looked at the chapter. You already done the assignments, uh, uh, the uh, interactive software that's provided with the publishers. You were exposed to the terminology. And now this is just a real quick overview. I'm going to go quick. I'm not going to go into much, uh, as much detail as we would in the class discussion. Uh, but this is just to solidify what you've already learned, we've discussed, and you uh, as a student will basically look at your notes that you've already taken, and if there's some areas that, oh man, I didn't remember that, jot it down. Remember, the more senses you utilize, the better, uh, or the higher probability that you will be able to um, retain this and uh, recover it or uh, retrieve it when you, uh, you need it. So. Uh, okay, so let's start in chapter one. This is uh, chapter one out of, um, what do you call it, uh, 20 chapters. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, business and entrepreneur. The one thing you're going to look at, and I'm, you already have access to these concept maps. You'll find them. You know, I either hand them out in the classroom or you're finding them in Blackboard course management system underneath the right file or it says uh, documents or, or concept maps. You have the second tier. Here you'll see the full, uh, all the tiers on there. When I say second tier, is uh, this here is the first tier. You see the plus, there's more information. I click it on there, that's the second tier. So it gives you the key concepts. So when you're studying, you see everything in one, uh, what do you call it, for lack of better words, uh, in, in one diagram. Then you could see how this portion fits into the other portion. The previous uh, uh, short recording I had was an overview of the whole course. So if you uh, want to see how this one chapter fits into the 20 chapters, uh, uh, go backward and look at one that says uh, overview to introduction of business organization. You're not going to be an expert after you finish this course. You will have a good solid foundation and then you'll take additional classes, maybe in marketing, maybe in, uh, in accounting, maybe in human resources or in uh, uh, management, uh, or in advertising and, and in sales. There's a lot of classes I also teach, so look me up. I teach at two uh, community colleges uh, uh, in Illinois, one in uh, Lake County and uh, one in Harper, okay? Uh, in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in Cook County, there's Harper College, and in Lake County, is College of Lake County. All right, so let's see what we have. So business and entrepreneur, what's a business? Basic definition. A business is any kind of uh, seek, uh, uh, seek profit with being social responsible. Remember, business don't have to be social responsible. It, uh, yeah, when I'm saying social responsible, they still have to follow all the laws and the rules not to uh, pollute the environment. Uh, but do they go above and beyond? And a lot of businesses do go above and beyond. Some because it's, you know, it's a small business and it makes good sense. I want to give back to the community who's serving us. But the other ones are basically, hey, I could write this off of my taxes. Uh, this is a good incentive. Uh, it's good for my marketing. And it makes the customers uh, uh, come back to my business because we have the same uh, uh, focus or goals uh, in mind, okay? So business basically, uh, but they don't have to, but they do that for all those other, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, benefits I just listed. Now, growth and survival, most businesses, you know, startup businesses, when in five years, there's a high probability they'll fail. So uh, when investors are looking at the businesses, <coughs> they want to look at a business plan. And if you're taking me in this course, online or face-to-face, -face, you will be doing a, uh, a feasibility study to see if uh, it makes sense to open up the business. You know, good idea, open up the business, but will it be able to be sustainable for the next four or five years, depending on the economy and where we're at now. Okay, so the other thing we're going to talk, so that's business, okay? And later on, this is business and entrepreneur. It, uh, it does, uh, oh, I got entrepreneurship here. Okay, so let me just move this around. Remember, uh, one thing those of you have taken me since it's the beginning, and some of you have already taken me for other courses, uh, I'm live, I don't cut it. What you see sometimes, like I'd be in the classroom, I'm like, oh my goodness, I forgot this. Uh, and, and I make the adjustments. I don't edit it out. You get what you see. It makes it easier. It keeps down the cost. And it brings the true nature of how you present online 
uh, to classes. This is, you know, it's not phony. This is, uh, remember, uh, I've got the academic uh, background and also the, uh, the, the business uh, application. So you'll learn not only the theory and the concepts, but how to apply it. And that's why you take the classes. Uh, I think it's a good, uh, you know, I'll throw in a, a, a plug-in for community colleges because uh, it serves the community. You get people who have the skill sets. They just don't like to do all the research and everything else, uh, and they like to give back to the community. So uh, what are consultants? Consultants are teachers of business. So now we do the same thing that we enjoy, teaching and helping people be successful and uh, grow it in their business. And it helps not only you know to pay us, but it also helps the economy and helps everybody else, okay? All right, so now entrepreneurship. Now when I look at entrepreneurship, what's the difference between an entrepreneur and a business? Real quickly, a business, if I buy a hot dog stand, I'll just use that as an example. You know, if I buy a hot dog stand from somebody else, it's a business, I'm taking over his or her business, I already have the customer base, I have all that information. Now an entrepreneurship is I still want a, a hot dog stand, but I'm opening up a hot dog stand all by myself. I have no suppliers, I have no customers, I have no historical data, I'm not sure, I gotta make all these new contacts, will it work? So now I'm new in the business, so I have to come out there. So that makes me an entrepreneur. But after the business is successful, I follow the same things, the same pattern as a regular business. Now, let's say I do, I'm the individual who purchased this business and I bis, uh, purchased a business, uh, a, a Polish deli or a Polish hot dog stand, for lack of better words, I'm Polish. And the neighborhood where I grew up is in Chicago, you know, in the uh, Bucktown slash uh, Humble Park area. And, you know, so it's a changing neighborhood. And let's say at this time the, the, the cultural change. So it ended up being more Hispanic uh, 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 population coming in. So what happens? I could, I'm selling Polish hot dogs. You know, they'll come in, but I want to get more customers in. So at that time, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to look at a different market. My market, my customer base that used to come into my business change now i can move my business and follow along some businesses do that or i still keep my core of the business but i bring in another demographic another product line that you'll be talking about and now i'm selling uh, uh tacos polish tacos i'm just making that up but that could be something it'd be regular tacos instead of regular uh, uh what do you call it meat in there i put polish sauces in there by the time you put the everything else there you uh, it'll be something unique it'll be something different you heard it here first all right so what am i doing now i'm an entrepreneur and then that picks up and you know what i mean so businesses are established but when they start venturing out and trying new products or trying to get another customer base they take on the entrepreneur spirit okay so what are they uh, uh so let's not go back i'm just opening my business and a start I'm, I'm not doing a franchise i'm not buying somebody else's business i say hey there's no hot dog stands or no polish uh hot dog stands or polish uh sausage stands here so now i'm going to look around and say so I'm, i see an opportunity i look at uh, the risk there is always a risk in any kind of uh, operation they may not come but if you do this properly you have a good understanding how to be successful and then you know, ups and downs, you have the freedom to succeed, make your own decisions, highly possible of wealth, you hire your own staff. Remember, a business, you do the same thing. I'm, just, I'm just trying to uh, utilize with the author and try to break it down so you conceptually understand it. Remember, I'm just adding on to what we had our discussion in class or in the forums. Okay, and you hire your own staff, so, you know, the downsides, you have the fear of freedom to fail, you have no paid vacation. After a while, you do have paid vacation. You have no health insurance, you have... Uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, uh, you have daycare, maybe you do, maybe you don't. And some businesses don't offer some of this now anyway, but that's something that you're, you're on your own. I mean, you're not working for somebody else that's providing this for you. You're an entrepreneur, okay? Now, part of the business and entrepreneur, they're going to talk about why do you all want to open up your own business. You could be successful working for a corporation, but most people are going to be a millionaire or really control your, uh, if you're self-motivated, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, in the full chapter on that, you will be better off opening up a business than working for somebody else. That's one path because there's a lot of people looking for that. You know, you have a lot of support, but then you have a lot of kind of competition, uh, and you're relying on that the business will be successful. And many people have seen large businesses fail or large businesses reducing the staff. And then most people who end up entrepreneurs, they came from the corporate side, they understand the business, they understand this and say, hey, I could do this on my own. And they open up in their startup. And that's what's going to help the economy is new startups. And we'll do that when we do it in the next chapter, chapter uh, uh, two. Okay, so you got to understand the difference between standard living is the amount one person could buy. 
you know, I could have all the money in the world, but I have no goods. What good is it? Okay. Uh, quality of life is political freedom, natural environment. Remember, so uh, I've got this, but I want to have the freedom and the choices to utilize, buy, or travel uh, uh, to help myself grow to, uh, in my uh, personal satisfaction. Okay, now we're going to talk about goods and services. Goods are tangible things. You can buy something. You can buy a good. I, I, I know it. Services are only as good as the last time you were serviced. But in marketing and business, I look at the two uh, uh, factors as me providing some kind of service or good uh, to the customer. So you'll see the author utilizes this interchangeably. So when I'm talking about goods or services, it could apply to either one. Okay, in a nonprofit organization, you have like the Goodwill, your Salvation Army, to name a few. You have uh, cancer societies, whatever. They basically have a little different on the taxing because the money they bring in, the revenue, doesn't pay the shareholders. The money they bring in after they pay off the administrative, which should only be up to 20%, the less you got to have some administrative costs, and 80 to 85% going for the cause. Uh, I still have to be running as a business. You got to market them. You have to be able to uh, uh, utilize uh, and get to the customer base you want. You know, Goodwill has a lot of stores coming out there. <clears throat> so the Salvation Army and they train the individuals that uh, are, uh, you know, they lost their jobs or retrained and try to get them back into the workforce. So with your contributions, you could write it off on taxes, but they also use their profitability that instead of giving it to shareholders and stocks or di uh, or dividends, they, uh, uh, they turn around and help the cause. But they still operate as business. They got to have higher people. They got to market it or everything else. Even if you're a church, synagogue, or, or a mosque, you basically have to get people into that. You know, you have the word of mouth, or but your new business, you do some advertising, you know, you know a little more subtle and, and more discreet that would basically meet the uh, requirements of a nonprofit organization. Because otherwise, you can say, hey, you're spending all this money in advertising, give to the charitable cause you are, but you still have to uh, plant the seeds. And you have to still let your customer base know your work and technology and everything. Uh, 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 the web basically is another good platform to bring them in. Okay, what are the trends in business? Okay, here are the trends in business. Raising information and communication like a technology is there. I got cell phone like I'm talking here. I'm recording to you on there. If you look at my office, I have uh, several monitors because depending on the work I'm doing. So uh, it's there. You have to know technology. You're taking this course here uh, online. You already know technology. gives you the flexibility in the comfort of your home. Uh, you're still with your family, your friends, or at work. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Sometimes they have distant learning courses and you're constantly learning so you Utilizes. Globalization, we are not longer a flat organization. What happens in China is now they got a slow downturn. It happens here. What happens with the oil prices? If the demand goes down, now we have more oil than to, uh, what we could do. Our prices in oil is going down. Is that going to be short lived? But maybe. And, you know, it could be one, two years or something that happen and the prices go back up. But you should be uh, aware of globalization, trying to get the best price. If I can't make it here, uh, uh, maybe I'll buy it from someplace else. But if my market is saturated it's uh, you know there's 1.5 billion people in china 1.5 give or take in, in india there's a lot of customers that could utilize my uh, uh my goods and i don't have to ever leave my surrounding my home base where i'm selling outside okay but you got to be concerned with the cost of the dollar the dollar is a strong dollar that means i can buy a lot of goods in we're getting too much stuff in what i'm trying to do is buy uh, get more goods uh, uh than buying our goods so weak dollar helps uh, uh, the small businesses because then our uh, costs uh our products are l uh, less and people still like our products like now we've got good products we got safety you know no product is 100 percent uh uh, you're going to have, but you have a higher probability that you will get a product that is uh, um, uh, uh, what you paid for and has of a higher quality. Aging workforce, uh, you have people that uh, over 45, over 50, are uh, basically, you know, uh, they're healthier because of the healthcare system. So they're not ready to retire at 55. They may be working to 75, 80, and then say, hey, I'm going to live around to 90 because our life expectancy is uh, improved. Self-directed workforce, we're looking more at teams, collaborative learning. Uh, we have a, a, a higher educated workforce. So you just give them the tasks or, uh, and they are more 
more motivated, even, uh, you know, I'm talking about Generation Y, Generation X, baby boomers and everything else, so you could get the thing done. Communication skills, you need it in business. You gotta communicate with individuals you never met before. Remember, we all have our bias and our prejudice, not to a large extent, but everyone likes something else. Like, I, I don't like pumpkin pie. You know, my son always kind of me pumpkin pie. I never tasted, never liked it. Oh, George, what do you mean? Now? But that's just me. No, okay. So I'm saying like I like I like that. But but I may be a baker. I may not like pumpkin pie, but my customer base likes pumpkin pie. And you got a master visa card or cash accepted. I love you. Here's all the pumpkin pies. Like you make the best pumpkin pie, and I might just know how to make it, but I may not have a, a, a taste for it. But you know, so remember. My skills and everything else from a business, uh, when I'm looking at it, uh, uh, you know, it's self-directed. It, it just gives me the goals, tell me what to do, and there's different ways of approaching it, uh, and technology is one way. You know, it also makes uh, the U.S. American uh, business very successful. We're very diversified. We have our problems, all uh, uh, cultures do, but we have a diversification of different people looking at different ideas, coming with different uh, a way of looking at it and approaching it, and that's what makes us uh, competitive when we want to be, all right? Uh, empowered employees, uh, we have less managers because, like I said, a higher uh, uh, educated workforce, we has, uh, you got to work in the communication skill, not only talking, you're using FaceTime, you're using Skype, your uh, uh, social media is a big uh, uh, new way of word of mouth. How do I utilize all this? You've got QuickBooks, you have a lot of uh, technology software. You cannot succeed in business without knowing technology. If you do, That's why you go to uh, the community college to learn some of the basic technology or you uh, uh, hire individuals who have that expertise, even if it's in the short term. Decision-making skills, you have to be able to make decisions. That's what they look at when they talk about empowerment. They're up to a certain point, I don't they, they, you know, they're adults. They understand it. Tell them, you know, tell them your parameters. Make the decision here. Leave it. Trust me, they're not going to rip you off. It gives them self-satisfaction when we talk about motivation. Leadership, you have to be a leader, self-starter in business. You may be the leader of the business. You may just be following. See what they do, and then I just uh, uh, piggyback on that and uh, uh, take a chunk of that uh, uh, a new product or everything else or modify mine to that. Continual learning. When you look at current continual learning organization, you're in school now, I'm always learning. I learn from my students, I learn from what's uh, uh, new in the book, I have to learn new technology. That's what makes you grow, that's what you have. You can't just live in a vacuum and the thing because all these forces we're going to talk about are affecting. So that's the trend. You have to utilize this. This is a plus. It makes our time very exciting. Okay, and I go again with global, global competitions there, free trade among uh, nations, more efficient distribution system. Because remember, I can make it all here, but I only have so many customers. And now with the travel and uh, boat and, and uh, uh, transportation, or uh, pity back with the railroad and train depends where you're located. And, uh, you get your goods out there very quickly and come back. I could order something else from uh, UK, you know, some CD or, or so, uh, something. And that one or two days or three days is here. How did they get here? If it's not a big, I'm not talking about a big item, you know, air freight, but other items will come there and, and it's reliable, okay? Uh, war on terrorism, and I'm going to talk about that. It does make effect of war on terrorism when you're looking at um, am I selling security uh, goods or if uh, uh, you know you don't see a lot of people like it traveling. So now technology, you could have gold meeting, I can meet people and see everything else. And we never left the comfort of our home, uh, 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 kept our costs down. But if I'm a business in an area that something would happen, how do I recoup and bring the customers back? What's another thing? Could I start selling my goods overseas? You know, so there's a lot. You know, global greening. If I look at the, let's see what else I had on here. Okay, you know, taxes diverted, security goes up, and insurance, okay? Global greening. Everybody wants to be green. <laughs> like, I don't even, hey, are you wearing a green shirt? I don't know, well, yeah, you know, I mean, what's it made out of? But if I'm looking at Coca Cola, Shell, are shifting the practices to save uh, energy. Here, uh, our waste management is waste management, and you see waste management, they're basically, like I said, oh, there's a garbage truck, they're no longer garbage, they're recycling. You're right, they do a lot of things, they help the environment, uh, you look at their trucks, they're painted green, same thing with FedEx, uh, I'm just using one for example, they basically have a green thing, they're using, uh, utilizing other uh, sources other than uh, oil, you know, uh, you know what I mean, oil prices drop down but it still has some kind of a pollutant, more of electric cars, or trying to do it so um, it, they uh, minimize their uh, global footprint, or uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, greenhouse gas and everything else to minimize any kind of cause uh, on the environment. 
Okay, now climate change is a big issue, movement to temperature of the planet over time. So if I'm a business, do I have, a, what do you call it, a solar panels? You know, just some opportunities. You know, electric cars are coming in, more acceptable. The only thing with electric cars, the only problem was is the battery. They're coming up with new concepts of the battery is safer, longer, quicker charge. So that makes a, a plus for us. Now, if we look at the social, uh, social population shift. You have different uh, people, uh, younger individuals, or maybe... Uh, 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 generation Y, uh, okay, they're basically, if I'm looking at that, they like movement. So work here, they, you know, the money's always there, but they like to see the world, they like to move around, they work for you for so uh, so many years. If you can't advance them, you, they, they feel they've learned everything you did, they're going to go to another organization, take the step up. That's just part of business. That's why we had the 401. That's why we have uh, the, the IRAs, different kind of retirement plans that the individuals could take with them. Hey, you utilize them for that short period of time. You have them four or five years. You know, some will stay longer, but I don't like to move around to see what else is out there. And that's what you utilize for growth. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel as a business person, but I could basically bring... Um, uh, use that talent and use them while I have them and then as they move on I already made the contacts in the network diversity you know and diversity is not only by culture it's by age it's by different disciplines you know age and grain two incomes that means there's more money out there and we'll find out that the women basically control most of the finances telecommunicating you know when I talk about stakeholders different than stockholders anyone who touches the organization as being socially responsible I should look at the uh, how my business practices, what I'm doing, uh, and we'll get that when we go on, I think it's chapter four, and it's just a quick overview. Uh, that I'm not upsetting them, that I am a good social citizen, okay? Now, economic and legal uh, things, you're looking at factors of production, and this will go more into the economic side. What we're gonna do, I think, in chapter two, I think is a a economics, we'll be talking about micro and micro, just to get a general idea. Remember, if you understand the basic, fundamental, underlining foundation, when we get into the math and we do the other calculation, it makes sense, okay? So, uh, uh, factors of production, freedom of ownership, uh, uh, Look at factor production, you know, you're looking at uh, countries, what do they have to offer, why would I want to open up my business there, if I want to expand the business, I'm looking at land, is the labor, not only that the labor is inexpensive, does the labor trainable, does the labor have the quality, when we moved into Mexico, uh, not moved, you know, when the U.S. had the NAFTA, and we talk about global, uh, uh, started uh, shifting work to Mexico, you know, we got the land, we had the capital, the risk was uh, uh, lower, uh, the problems had that uh, we didn't have, uh, they didn't have enough engineers that we needed, so we still had to import our engineering staff and train them and then go out. Now they're coming in back, they've got the entrepreneurship and they've got the knowledge. So now they're very uh, strong. But what happened, the cost went down, so they, we'll, we'll talk about later, they went to China. Now China, all of a sudden, their costs are going up as people's standards of living, quality of life goes up. They want more, so the cost of goods goes up. Not only the resources, but re remember your human element, human, human uh, 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 resource that makes it or ships it to do that, uh, that functionality also has to uh, be compensated for. Okay, freedom of ownership, contract laws, eliminate corruption, uh, good luck with that. Uh, what I'm saying, you know, uh, some countries are very corrupt, other countries uh, are not, but then we'll talk about that. You know what I mean? You can't really get, get, get rid of it because, you know, uh, you have people, it's uh, what's in it for me. It's just life. You know, for a business, you have to be able to, what they call risk management, uh, <coughs> minimize it or try to contain a tradable currency, minimum tax regulations. You see a lot of businesses, large corporations are leaving the U.S. because they have a better tax break and uh, incentive or they're leaving the state of Illinois and going to either Wisconsin Senate, or, or uh, Indiana because they have a better, uh, uh, or someplace else for their headquarters because they have a better break on their taxes, okay? There's this one here. The screws and teach yet. Okay, all right. Okay, so here we are. Now, competition. When I look at competitive uh, things, customer service is your first contact with individuals. So, speed, demand. If somebody calls in, don't wait, give them respondents. Remember, you have an unhappy customer, the, he or she's an unhappy uh, uh, person not buying my product. They also have friends through social media. I did this, you know, what a ripoff or whatever, and that thing could fly. It could just 
spearheaded. You know, they had the thing in a, and I want to. I want to. I don't know if it was FedEx or UPS. I'll leave it uh, out there. You know, uh, for Christmas time, TV just thrown over the fence. That was caught on a security camera. That hurt that business. My God, that's you know, uh, is that good service? And you may say, hey, for ten dollars later, we'll give you the glove treatment uh, service, whatever. But you see I me, mean, so uh, customer service. So if I have a complaint, something that doesn't happen, I want to come back. If they're not happy, I mean, and, you know, you can't satisfy all the customers. You give away the store. But you uh, satisfy the customers to the what you think uh, the, is a good resolution to their uh, uh, to their product. If you want to spend $20 and you want a new product and say, and say I want $30 back for my time, hey, you broke this, you know, it was questionable, I'll refund it, i give you uh, credit, or let's see what happens. If there's something wrong on my part, came up damaged, I apologize and give them something back in return that's even better or something else. But you need that customer service because your competition is doing that. Your competitors, you never want them to go to your competitors. To go to competitors, they may like them better than you and may not come back. It's always easier if you've read in the chapters or will be reading in the chapters or what many of you already know to uh, maintain your basic customers you have than to go out and get new customers. Okay? Restructures empowerment, a lot of organizations are doing that just to be more competitive, get rid of the waste that over time you get. Productivity, uh, and if I look at productivity as amount of output you generate, how many hours you work, you know, I'm working your eight hours, but I don't produce anything. Hey, I'm working eight hours, I only came up with five, and somebody else is doing tw uh, twice as much work, my competitor. What are they doing differently that they could produce the same problem? I may have to look at my processes, and this is another chapter we'll be covering about. And is it efficient, the way I'm doing it? Those who work in retail or fast food, they have all the, uh, 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 you know, the ketchup, the mustard, everything else that most people want right away from the majority. Oh, what do you want? Do you want garlic? It's way over here, you want a special sauce? Because you're one of another, everything else is right there, handy for them to get that, uh, uh, your product out. And you know, I drive up to a lot of places. I think so far Wendy's is probably the fastest. I drive up, especially the one close by home. I order and there's a line, boom, I don't know how to do it. They've got enough people, they got the process, one, two, three. They already know how many customers an air is gonna buy coming in here. That's where you utilize the data of your processes to prepare. So when you know those customers come in on Tuesdays, they got a higher peak than I do on uh, Wednesdays, I have another staff member if I could see those trends. Don't try to be, uh, everybody's always Monday, Tuesday, so many hours, and you know, what are your peaks? Then you make sure you staff them properly. This way, if they come back, yeah, I always go there. I go there, I gotta wait five hours, two hours, I go here for lunch, boom, boom, in and out, okay? And how effective is your uh, uh, producing the desired results? And again, empowerment. Uh, so the people could say, hey, we apologize, let's just give you another hamburger, we made a mistake, I'm sorry, uh, you, you know what I mean? All right, technology, we talked about that, that it improves uh, uh, productivity, e-commerce, identity theft, you, you know, you got the chip card, uh, whether you like it or not, it's gonna cost me more, it takes a longer, but if a customer goes to your store and, you know, and a lot of times your employee or something happens where their uh, uh, personal information or the credit card is uh, compromised, then I can come back to the store. Look what happened with Target. Look at what happened to Home Depot when they were, you know, it's not their fault. First thing I'm going to say, hey, you're a big company. You should have had better security system. Now, how many of us shop at smaller businesses? What security systems do they have? You may say, hey, we are secure. That's where PayPal comes in. You don't have to worry about us. Here's the, someone that protects your information. I'm trying to sell one another. There's other services out there that will transfer your uh, uh uh, your cash or even a lot of the software will encrypt your uh, ID but still give you the, the bank enough information to take the, 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 uh, uh, the finances out of your uh, checking or, or uh, debit uh, or uh, savings account. You know, e-commerce, we talked about that, business to business, you know, but not business, you know, business to consumers and business to business. Remember, there's no such thing as consumer to consumer. If you give me something away, okay, that's gifts. But if I'm looking, if I'm selling, I have a garage sale, or I'm selling something on Amazon.com, or I'm selling something on eBay, what am I basically doing? I'm taking the role of a business person, so it's basically a business to consumer, okay? And productivity, we talked about that. Identity theft, we talked. Protect the identity, just so you have the other things, you know. Don't ever have any social security cards or anything else. Tell them, hey, we'll never ask for that over the phone. 
Uh, what happened there? Uh, use strong passwords or encourage that and monitor your own uh, credit. Uh, and there's some business in there. There's, you know, um, SafeLock or some other ones. But what do you get? You know, remember, you get some of them. If I'm only monitoring, fine, let me know. A lot of banks get into that and do that uh, as an additional service for their uh, customers. Okay? And different databases. All right? So if I'm looking at different databases, a small business, a large business, or medium business, when you have customer contact, you should be creating a database. You should try to get their alternative email. You should try to get their, uh, what do you call it, their, their mobile phone. Here's how I can send information out. And technology now, you know, because you got the thing of the GPS, it'll tell you if you're in area, hey, there's a sale. I know if there's any kind of sales in men's clothes and I'm in this area from this store, page me, alert me. Boom, I'm there. Wow. You know, you say we're giving up your privacy. Our privacy has been given up a long time ago. I go around and see more cameras, my cell phone, everything else. I'm talking now. So, but remember, you still have to be um, logical. You still have to be cautious. You don't have to hide in a shell. But, you know, there's services out there that protect you. So you have contingency, but that's just part of doing business. But when I'm talking about databases, protect your database because there's you got your client information, your customer base. That's where you go back. You end up a pattern how they're buying. You, you, you know what I mean? What they're doing. If you have an ad, you could send everything out to them. You know, you already, you already, you kind of have a relationship built or a connection, so you understand. Okay, the first workforce, like it or not, you got race, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation. All those are unique and different segment of market my hot dog stand i will have everything uh, i'll have everyone in those categories not more this is just some list just to have an idea as long as you have a mastercard visa or cash they're basically out of business don't make a difference i'm a business person but you have to be careful you, the people you hire you have to hire uh, you know I mean you try to get the diversity because your customer base you should mirror your customer base uh, you know, sometimes I'm an area and I may not, uh, just because of the customer base, they may not be a certain people of a certain culture. There's nothing I could do about it. Then I come in a shop in my store, maybe uh, a few, but I don't have that base to get my workforce in. So I try to mirror it. I always try to keep diversity. Again, if I'm diversified, not only my the people I'm serving, I'm also diversified in the product line I'm carrying. I can handle any kind of... Uh, fluctuations or ripple effects within uh, the consumer market or industrial market or even in the economic market. Part of business is being uh, proactive, thinking ahead. Okay, evolution of business and you know, agriculture, we still do that. Big, larger farms, but what we're finding out, the same thing, we got these large farms, but if one farm gets some kind of virus or something else, it wipes out a whole area. Just a big impact on the whole economy, especially the food supply. Same thing in manufacturing, we're getting stronger manufacture, but most of our manufacturing, for lack of better words, is uh, uh, utilizing technology, different type of workforce, but we still come up with good products. So we're producing more with a smaller footprint, uh, environmentally with a smaller footprint aesthetically when in the neighborhood because everything else is done uh, you know you got t uh, 3d printers you have a lot of different ways of um, uh, manufacturing service we're in the service but like anything else you can't have an economy you're always serving other people we have to make something and information based data something to think about overload information all this technology is supposed to make my life easier but when you think if I didn't have anything on board but man, I got a lot of time to do nothing, all right? But you can get back to yourself, so I'm gonna say. What's the government's role in here? Remember when I'm looking at uh, economics, for lack of a better word, the government taxes our fiscal policy, minimizing spending and keeping taxes and regulation uh, to the minimum, uh, minimum, good luck, government. And I did say that a little sarcastically. I'm just kidding, you because know, remember, uh, we're in the same position, we spend more than what we make. And that's a bad position in business. But a lot of times in business, I have to spend more. I'm not trying to get away from any kind of credit because I have to advertise, I have to bring people in, I gotta buy my merchandise, maybe a lot of times six months in advance before it actually goes on my sh shelf because uh, that's just the time I'm getting the best deal. I'm a warehouser and I, I do a lot of other uh, uh, roles to keep the business uh, uh, going forward. 
Okay, passing laws that enable business people to write enforceable contracts. You know, our currency, again, when looking at government rules, they keep an eye to make sure that there's no uh, illegal trading, that everything is up in front, and the bottom line, that they get their taxes due. Because when they get their taxes due, they could improve those roads. They could help the infrastructure of your community and even help you as an individual uh, within the community. Okay, so I hope that's not too bad. I think it took a long time. Uh, hopefully, it's only about like half an hour. I won't know till I, um, uh, for uh, for lack of better words, uh, until I uh, uh, stop this. Okay, so what do we cover today? We covered business and entrepreneur. You know the difference of that. We've already discussed that. You look at the trends of business for more of a service. We used to be technology. Uh, I think we're going to go back and, you know, manufacturing is picking up, but a different type of manufacturing machine is going to be made, a different type of employee, a different uh, footprint. Uh, you know, we talked about global, we got a whole chapter in global. We looked at economic and the legal aspects of the, you know, the tied in with the government role. We look at evolution of business, how do businesses grow. Uh, uh, you look at technology and uh, competitiveness is what's going to be in the minds of your consumers and what's going to make you profitable. And if you're profitable, you can expand your business. You can hire more uh, 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 workers, for lack of a better word, and enjoy that vacation you did working hard. All right, so my name is Dr. George Machaki. This is Introduction to Business, Chapter 1, uh, Environmental uh, uh, Concerns. And I'll see you yeah, online very shortly for uh, chapter two. Thank you.